to. We're FMB members, and my company is a family business, and I am the 11th generation of the business. And I'm here to talk to you about how to find your builder, um, whether it be a new build or a renovation project. Um, my company's based in London, and, we, and I've got 45 years' experience as a quantity surveyor and uh, covering all kinds of construction from housing developments and all the rest of it. And uh, I moved over to the family business um, to concentrate on the smaller domestic housing market, specialising in old and defects in old buildings and listed buildings, particularly damp and decayed buildings. Um, in the last 10 years, I've um, qualified as a thermographer uh, and that's thermal imaging uh, and obtained a diploma in retrofitting which is the use of uh, and how best to insulate the existing housing stock. Right, now, um, who's doing a uh, new build project? Is anybody doing a new build or renovation? You're planning renovation. Well, um, Renovation, you've, um, if you've decided you can do it yourself without the, the help of an architect or surveyor, you need to really get all your expectations down on a piece of paper. Um, write them down in detail. How big is the extension? Um, uh, the shape of it, has it got roof lights? As much detail as possible. The types of bricks and the alterations. Are you going to be taking down any major walls um, and carrying out any serious external work as well, patios and gardens? Uh, and do you need any landscaping done? You need to keep think about all these things. Um, finishes, write those down. Uh, taps, tiles, um, bathroom suites, kitchens, um, colours. Do you want the builder involved in getting the carpets put down? Um, write all these expectations down and what you expect from your builder um, because he's going to be providing you with a specification and unless you give him some proper guidelines you, your, the quotations that you're going to get in aren't going to be all that meaningful. So um, the other thing is, is are you going to be living in the house when the builder's going to be there? Um, are, there going to be need, are you going to need temporary petitions? Um, to keep the dust down. Um, if you're going to be moving out and the builder's got the whole run of the house, then it will affect the price and it will be cheaper. Are you a hands-on or hands-off person? Um, you need to make, put that, make sure you're clear on that to the builder as well. And the budget, have you got all your funds in place? Do you need to remortgage? Um, and can you get that mortgage? Uh, make sure that all those details are all clearly um, uh, sorted out in your mind. And also, of course, the VAT, don't forget that. Right, well, um, how do you find the right builder then? Well, the FMB, Federation of Master, Bu Master Builders, that's a very, very good place to start. Uh, they've got lots of people down. Um, you can only become a member of the Federation unless you, when you've been thoroughly grilled and vetted and they can see exactly what you can do and you can prove um, what you can do. Um, social media recommendations, um, ask your friends, family, all that kind of thing. Um, and if, you, if you're short of trying to find builders, then drive around the local neighbourhood. Um, look for where a building project's going on and maybe at the weekend call by and talk to the neighbour and ask them um, if it's you know, okay if you can have the builder's name and address and are they good, what do they think of them. So there's all those ways of doing it. So you've got your short list of builders together and that's great and uh, it's now time to interview them and get them round. So, Get two or three, maybe four builders, uh, get them around to see you and interview them. Have a short list of the things you want to ask them. Get to know them. 
um, this is a really valuable time for you to make the right decision. How long they've been established? Well, that's no problem for us. We've been around for 300 years. Um, who's on the team? You know, have they those team people they've got? Have they been working for the company or the individual for some time? Um, jobs. Do they do more job, more than one job at a time? Have they got two or three? And who are the supervisors? Who's going to run those jobs, or is the boss going to be there every day? Um, the other good question to ask them is, how about CPD? CPD is Continuing Professional Development. Um, FMV are very strong on this, and they're holding courses on all kinds of things, and in particular health and safety is one, and are they up to speed with all of that? Um, uh, case studies, another thing, if they come around with a portfolio of case studies, have a look at the type of work they do. Is it the same kind of work that you, or similar work, that you're going to be trying to do to your house? Um, and that will give you an indication if they're experienced in that kind of work. Um, and are they used to working on building sites or on customers' houses where the whole family is there? All very important. And um, when you're given a, a list of clients um, that they've, that they've had or worked for, then not only ring them up, but go around and look at the work, look at the quality of the work. Um, very, 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 very useful. Um, and it'll give you, and you can talk to the owners as well, and that will give you a good feedback as, uh, on what they're like. Right, next one. Um, Right, now you can uh, get all your quotes in and compare them. This is a very, very, very important area. Um, why is one cheaper than the other? Don't always go for the cheapest. There's normally a really, normally a very, very good reason for it. Has there anything been left out? Um, does the programme period differ? Uh, materials? make sure everything's been included, bathrooms, kitchens. The other thing is to talk to them about is the more practical things of running the job and have they been included, like parking. Sometimes you might have parking meters outside your house. Skips, site toilets, have they been included? Um, it's, it's quite often that they are forgotten and all everybody turns up on site and then within half an hour they're saying, where's the loo? and the customers locked their house up and <laughs> gone off. So all those things are quite important. And access, security, keys, um, you need to talk to them about. And, and by talking all this through with them, then you will find out if they're used to dealing with all these kind of day-to-day -day problems. And that will help to give you a confidence um, with the builder. Um, don't ch always choose, choose the cheapest. There's a good reason why it's not the cheapest. Um, maybe the builders made a simple error, an additional, an, something in addition, or something on his list of things that he's going to do. Um, and there's no point in him coming and starting the work, and then you suddenly, he suddenly finds out he's five or 10 grand light on the price. You'll, you'll really start to have a problem. His motivation to give you the right job with the right quality because it's our perception. It's the same that we have work done um, as well. It doesn't matter what it is, that you, your perception is that you will get a good job. You will get a perfect job. And it's your perception of that. And um, uh, you, you don't want any reason why the builder has suddenly lost motivation and then you can find out, and you suddenly find out why. So um, look carefully at, at, at the detail. Right, how, what, when, and why? Um, it's the detail, terms and conditions. Um, get a contract. The FNB have got very, very good, simple to read and to understand contracts. Um, they, they've got one for small works, medium works, and large works. And um, 
they're easy to read, easy to understand, and if you, um, and if you don't understand them, and the builder can't properly explain them to you, then you can always ring the FNB up, and they will sure they'll talk to you. Um, right, scheduling the work and time scales and payments and, and money. Um, stay away from cash. You know, lots of people say, oh, well, cash is nice. It's not nice. It's amazing how forgetful people are um, when you haven't got a record of something that's been paid over. Um, it leads to misunderstandings and um, if there's a dispute in the contract and then there's cash involved as well, how do you deal with that one? It's, it's a complete no-no, so stay away from it. Um, scheduling work and programs. Really, really important. A small program, start date, the activity is down on one side, dates are on the top. When are you going to start? When are the foundations are going in? When is the drainage going in? When are the walls going up? When's the floor, roof going on? And follow that process through to if there's any demolition of any major walls, when are they coming down? And how that all interlinks with the overall job. Um, other bullet points on the programme you need to think about, very, very important, a key date such as delivery of kitchen units, um, uh, specialist parts for, say, bathrooms. Um, uh, have you decided on the colours? Is, is there a delay on carpets coming in, or specialist work tiles? Um, uh, and the services as well. Time scales to get the services in um, are really important. Um, services can be as much as a third of the project cost. So you need to be very clear on what you expect in your services. Take, for instance, electrics. You sort of say, well, electrics, well, I'll have a point here and a point there and a couple there. Oh, yeah, and how about 24 lights across the ceiling in the, in the lounge? And that's suddenly, 20, you know, 3,000 quid away. And, and unless you've got that down on your expectations in the earlier pages, right, that can suddenly add up very, very quickly. So time scales, what's expected, what's included, um, get them all down on paper, write them down. Write the specification yourself, if you like, in the form of bullet points. And if, if being a quantity surveyor, I think about this kind of stuff. So many square metres of plaster makes it, means X amount of money. So um, if you want to write down so many metres of skirting in there and flat walls, plastering here and on the ceiling, um, it helps to identify the amount of work and money and time for those different functions. So, and not all builders think like that. They just walk in and go, hmm, yeah, okay, I've got an idea, that, that's my experience. And they jot it down and they come to a price just like that. But it is definitely worth, as I keep saying, writing that list down of what your expectations are, exactly what you want them to do. So the services is a very, very, very important part. Um, setting the ground rules, updates, variations, Every single contract um, that I've ever been on is varied in some form, shape or form. It might be varied as far as um, even you know, changing the colour. But you need to, look to um, have an agreement with the builder that if something is going to change, whether or not there's money involved is irrelevant. If something's going to change, he will send you an email that night just saying, I, you know, this is additional, this is omitted, and that's all quite clear. And an agreement that he will value those things within, say, seven days. So you know what the changes in that project value that you've got um, on a regular basis. So there's no nasty little um, uh, surprises six months later down the line when you've suddenly got um, another 20 grand bill stuck under your nose and you had no idea it was going to happen. So, the really value and time in the building industry is so closely linked, it's not true. 
And when you ask a, a builder to do a variation, you might think, oh, well, that's only a couple of hundred pounds, but it might be quite an important part of the program period of getting other trades done. For example, um, a, um, let's say, a, a specialist cable for a, electronic computers or something like that to go all the way around the house. And it's coming from China, and it's, it's going to take another week to get here. Um, nobody thought about it, but it's going to take another week. And it was your request as a variation. Now, although that might only take a day to put in, it might have a, an effect on the program of maybe a week or two weeks. And if you've got that effect on the program, um, the builder, at the end of the day, if he's going to be on site an extra week, he's going to want to be paid for his supervisor's time and maybe the site labourer's time for, for that extra time. So it's not just putting that cable in, there is the additional cost. And you need to know that if you're going to be issuing a variation to the builder. So you've got the opportunity to say, no, okay, we won't do that because of the cost. And to, to get, you know, so the important is to um, discuss this, and I've got the bottom there, keep the communication going all the time, talk to them. So having updates every week or every fortnight is really important, communicating and talking about variations of value and time and scheduling the work is, is, is very important. So get that program stuck on the site wall as quickly as you can and you look at that every week and then you can see how the builder's doing and, and if there are problems where he hasn't been able to achieve X, Y and Z, well, we, you'll know why and you can talk about it and help, hopefully um, he can get over the problem and maybe you can help him. So, um, all of that you need to sort of talk about to your builder uh, very, very carefully uh, and in detail. And it will help you, all the builders that you interview, and it will help you decide on the right one. Right, well that's, um, that's that. Um, uh, so I, what we do, Tiffins is that uh, I use my qualifications and experience uh, to give my clients the best advice um, in not only the renovation, improvement and mod modernisation projects, but also to save money and identify heat loss through the thermography that I do um, and building defects. Um, um, whether they be damp or rock, it doesn't really matter, condensation problems and how best to overcome them. So what, I, what we do is we hopefully we manage to get a message over to the customers where we tell them um, why something's happening, where it's happening, how long it will take and how much it will cost. Well, that's us, that's uh, Tiffin and we're based out in Hertfordshire. Uh, any questions? Find a builder. <laughs> The FMB stand is just down the end here, and you'll probably find lots of builders sitting in their um, in their wheelbarrows drinking tea. So uh, I'm sure there'll be people you can talk to if you want to. So thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you.